guys, what's going on, man? Welcome back to another episode of The Arsenio Buck Show. And for those of you who have been following my, what is it, my podcast, my personal development podcast, I'm back into the Robert Kiyosaki. I'm talking about things that regards to money and, you know what, being able to save. And now I've gotten into a very interesting part of his Rich Dad, Poor Dad book. And it's something that we need to identify ourselves. So if you guys are listening to this in the podcast, <sighs> I told you guys that I would be doing a separate podcast uh, in regards to this. But at the same token, uh, it's something that I've already repeated. Now, for those of you who are actually watching on Instagram TV, you're very lucky because you're getting this probably one or two days before. So basically, we need to figure out what cash flow we have, right? And so in regards to cash flow, guys, we need to figure out, are you a poor person? Do you possess a poor cash flow? Are you in the middle class or are you a rich person? So we need to figure out, okay, what is cash flow and what does this all mean? Well, you know what? It all depends. If you wake up in the morning and you do a job and you get a salary and with that salary you pay for expenses, the transportation, the, the, the taxes, the food, the rent, the clothing, everything that we use on a daily basis, that means you have a systematic poor cash flow. I know, I know, a lot of you are like, God damn, well, I mean, you know, well, it, it, it's this and, you know, it's because of this, because, hey, it's all good, you don't have to justify, because I'm kind of in all three of them, all right, so what there is, what, what it is, is that we have an income statement, okay, and with that income statement, you have a job, and in the job, it goes into this little box, this little box there, of course, there are two boxes within this box, okay, one on the top, one on the bottom. Now, the one on the top is your income, and the one on the bottom is your expenses. Now, in saying that, at the bottom of that page is your balance sheet. And because you don't have assets, and because you don't have liabilities, all you have are expenses. Now, with the majority of the people out here in Thailand, I can only speak from experience, right? If you make anywhere between 300 to about 700 US dollars a month, you have a poor person cash flow. Now, this is not to, not to be offended because a lot of Americans have a poor person's cash flow. As a matter of fact, probably about 85 to 90% people in the world have a poor person's cash flow. That means you have a job which maintains a salary. And with that salary, you go into the expenses. That's all it is. So now going into what we have is a middle class a middle class cash flow. So what does this mean? Well, basically, you have a job, which, again, gives you a salary. But instead of paying for expenses, you go down to your balance sheet. And in your balance sheet, again, you have the assets and you have the liabilities. Now, the liabilities, that's credit card debt, that's car loans, that's mortgage. Okay? And then after you pay that off, it goes into the expenses. And then after the expenses... That's it. You have no more money for the rest of the month. Now, what is a liability? Well, it's not only mortgage, credit cards, school loans, all that stuff. But it's also a car. Believe in that you think it is a liability. I'm sorry, that you think it's an asset, but it's actually a liability because it's coming out of pocket every month. So I'm going to give you an example. There was a girl by the name of, oh man, I forgot her name, but she was a friend about six years ago. Oh my God. I met her. She worked at the bank and she maintained a salary of about 550 to about 585 US dollars a month. Now in Thailand, that's actually pretty substantial. But if you actually think about it, what it comes down to is what we have is the fact that people want to keep up with the Joneses. Now, I don't know if you guys are going to hear this on a podcast before or after, if you're listening to me on the podcast. If you guys are actually watching me on Instagram TV, you're probably not going to hear about this until uh, probably another day or so, right? Or probably two days, three days. doesn't really matter. It's coming up soon. But when you keep up with the Joneses, you're literally buying things because you want to fit in with everyone else. So let me give you an example, 530, let's say 550 US dollars. I'm trying to put this into USD so everyone understands. But your car is probably anywhere between 300 to 400 USD a month. See, you think it's an asset because you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. This is what Robert Kiyosaki said, 
25 years ago. This isn't what Gary Vee has been saying the last two years. Robert Kiyosaki talked about this back in the 90s. Now, just to, just to air that out. Now, keeping up with the Joneses. You want to buy a car because you want to flutter. You want to you want to flounder that and say, yeah, you want to strut your stuff. You want to put yourself in luxury and show everyone that you have money. <sighs> well, I got <laughs> I have bad news for you. You're coming out of pocket. And to be honest with you, because you have this car that you can't even afford, credit card debt's way over. You're way over your head already. See, you thought your car was an asset, but it's actually a liability. You think your home's an asset, but you're actually paying property tax for it. Oh, yeah. See, these liabilities, I don't have any. I did have a couple. There were a couple of things that, you know, I was paying for VA and this and that. And I'm like, dude, this isn't making much, making much sense. You know, these aren't expenses that I need. These aren't everyday expenses like transportation. This is more of a liability. Like, what am I paying? This? What, what am I doing with this? Okay, uh-uh, cut this off. Okay, no, nah, uh-uh, cut this off. Don't need it. Uh-uh, cut this off, cut this off, cut this off. So then I said, I took off all my liabilities and I just have day-to-day -day expenses. But a lot of you right now, you guys do not have day-to-day -day expenses. You have liabilities who, which are just like overshadowing you right now. So if you live in that middle class, okay, fine. Live in that middle class. But honestly, be very, very honest with yourself and say, you know what, dude? I got this liability here. Do I really need this? And can I take, can I get rid of it right now? That's one thing. That's a hard truth that you need to ask yourself. And now going into the rich person, I just so happen to have an asset and some people have assets. Now I'm going to give you an example. One of my friends, I'm very close to her. She's like my closest friend out here in Thailand. She has an asset. She doesn't even realize it because she has notes and these notes fall into that asset category and that produces her income. Well, it goes back up into her income statement, and those are the royalties that she gets. So I'm going to give you an example. An example of a rich person, okay, their cash flow, it doesn't start in the income statement. It starts in the balance, right? It starts in the balance sheet. So, yes, they do have liabilities such as, like, consumer loans, but that balance sheet, those assets, we're talking real estate. The stocks, the bonds. Hey, I'm not talking about the bullshit mutual funds. Think of that. It's good. I'm talking about index funds. Learning how to trade the notes, the intellectual property. What does that produce? Well, that produces income, which goes back up into their income statement. And that gives you your rental income. That comes from the real estate. That gives you your dividends, which comes from the trading. That gives you your interest and your royalties. Me, I just so happen to have a podcast. Those podcasts, however little... It does produce royalties. Now, is that an expense? It's not a liability. It's an expense that comes out every month, but it does. It, it is an asset because I actually get royalties from it. Now, Herbalife. Now, now that you know, some people say, "Oh, well, do you actually get paid from Herbalife and this and that?" Well, I could, and this is why I stopped it for a long time because I'm like, you know what? I like it for my own personal benefits. But people have been asking me on my blogs and just about everywhere, especially on YouTube. Hey, I want some of this. I want some of this. I want some of this. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I really don't do all of that. And now I'm like, Arsenio, you do have the potential to actually make royalties from that. See, that's considered to be an asset. Guys, this doesn't put you in the right or the wrong. This is identifying where your cash flow is. Do you have liabilities? To have expenses, everyone has expenses. Everyone has day-to-day -day expenses. If you are paying for food, that is an expense. That's okay. All right. If I got to shout out some money and do this and do that, that is OK. Paying those day to day expenses is quite all right. But having liabilities and thinking, oh, yeah, I have a condo, but I have to pay these dividends. I have to pay this and pay that. Let me give you an example. The condo. And I only have 50 seconds to do this. So you guys are going to have to revert to the podcast very soon. But the homeowner that I'm actually I'm renting out the condo, he has a mortgage to pay. The bank probably owns the condo. He has to pay out and shut out every month. He actually got a notice in the mail. And guess what? It was about 500 US. I sent him the picture. I said, hey, <laughs> I ain't paying this. He said, no, no problem. He hurry up and he paid for it. See, that's the property tax that he has to pay for. So is he actually profiting from this? Don't really know. But guys, this is what you have to think about when it comes to liability. 